Now this is going to be fun. We are upgrading the inverter system on our Hatteras 58 motor yacht and we're doing it with the new Blue Eddy off-grid system. If you follow our channel, you probably know that about five years ago, we installed an inverter system with lithium batteries on our boat. A little while later, we upgraded by putting on some solar panels, and then we upgraded to the Epic uh, 460 amp hour lithium batteries. Now the system worked okay. It powered all of our 110 volt systems like our refrigerators and our ice makers and the coffee maker and all that. Uh, but it wasn't quite powerful enough. Lynn loves to cook and we found that anytime she tried to use say two burners on the stove or maybe a burner in the microwave and maybe the hot water heater came on, it would short out the inverter. And that's because the inverter was only 3000 watts and I guess we need a little bit more than that. Now of course we could just turn on the generator, uh, but we like to avoid that. The generator is noisy and of course it's eating fuel. So we needed to find a new solution. And we kind of had two options. We could double down on the system that we had, or we could look for say maybe a more powerful solution. And that's when we found out about this new Blue Eddy off-grid system. Now there are a lot of reasons we decided to try this new Blue Eddy system, but one of the most important was the, the output. It's 6,000 watts, 5,000 watts of 110 power and another 1,000 watts of DC power. And that's basically double what we're currently getting out of our Victron. Now the thing that I think makes it a kind of a game changer for people like me, boaters and I guess RVers and off-grid people, is that it's very simple. Just about every component you need is built into one unit which is called the RV5 or basically it's their power hub. So there's no more like juggling you know, uh, battery chargers and solar chargers and alternator chargers and bus bars and inverters and circuit protection and communication cables. It's all built into this one box here, which makes it you know, almost plug and play. In a, a previous video, I posted a diagram of my current system, and you can see how complex it really is. I've had a lot of boaters contact me as they try to, to build their own system. And believe me, I have nothing bad to say about my current system, which is basically built around Victron components. Uh, they work perfectly fine, and I especially like my Epic uh, 460 amp hour batteries. They're great. However, it is a very complex system, and people reach out to me trying to you know, get some advice on how to put a system together, and uh, quite often they kind of give up and they end up hiring a marine tech to come out and install their inverter, which is perfectly fine, but it can get very costly. Well, let me show you what, I, what I've got here. Um, Blue Eddy was calling this their smart solution package. I'm not sure if they, they still are. Uh, you can go to their website. They have various packages that they put together. On their website, it is listed as uh, RV5 plus the B4810 plus the E-Panel plus the E-Pad plus 200 watt. Uh, solar and it's selling for four thousand dollars which I think is an incredible deal for everything that you see here well let me go over the components one by one the first component which is I guess you could call it the heart of the system is their power hub they call it the RV5 power hub and it's what I mentioned earlier and it, it includes the inverter and the and all the different chargers and circuit protection communications all of that the next component is this uh, the battery. This is a 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery, which means it's actually, you know, the 48 volts are really 51.2, I think. So this is over five kilowatts of storage right here. Uh, additionally, uh, it is IP65, so it's marine safe. And also uh, there's a built in heater in it. It self heats so that if you're using this up north, uh, you know, if you're boating up in, you know, the New England area or something like that, or, you know, if you're an RV or, you know, and you need it to be good in uh, cold weather, that's, that's already built in. Now, the next uh, part of the system is they call it an e-panel. And this is basically a distribution panel. Uh, you have uh, your, your 110 comes out of this uh, hub into here, and then you can distribute it through, I believe there's eight breakers here. Now, I'm probably not gonna use that so much. I'm probably gonna take it right from here and go to my existing panels on my boat. That way I'm not rerunning a bunch of wires and I've got you know 40 different things hooked up in different ways. So that uh, this is gonna be more of a pass-through for the 110. However, there is a DC section here. 
and it has uh, 20 different circuits, 20 fuses, which they give you as well. Um, and uh, I'm going to use that, I know, because my Raritan toilets are 24 volt, um, as are the, the underwater lights on my boat. And there's a couple other things I'm going to be adding in the near future that are also 24 volt. So I know I'm going to be using that part of this distribution panel. The next component are solar panels. And uh, I have two of them here. That's what came with this particular package. Uh, they are flat solar panels. And the reason I'm happy about those is I'm going to put them on our sun deck. And that way, when we want solar, we have solar, but if we want to lay out on the sun deck, we just take our cushions out, throw it on top of these, and we can use the sun deck. So that's great. It only came with two this package. I think I'm going to add four more. That's 200 watts. I add four more of 600 watts, plus I already have 400 up on the flybridge, so that'll give me 1,000 watts of solar panel. And the last component is this, uh, this monitor. Uh, they call it an EPAD. Uh, and this enables you to monitor the system in real time. It's also internet and Bluetooth, so you can, um, you can connect remotely to monitor your system as well. Uh, it also has uh, areas where you can monitor your fuel levels and your water levels, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I haven't really um, dug into it too much yet, uh, but there are a whole bunch of connections on the back to, um, to monitor various things and communication ports, so this is, this is pretty cool. I think I'm going to put this up on the flybridge. And now finally, when you get a system like this, they send you all the wiring that you need. You get all the cables, all the communication cables as well. And what's really cool is everyone is marked. They have little stickers on them and it tells you exactly where to plug each end in. And that makes it incredibly simple to wire up this system. Now, you don't have to buy everything that I've got here. They have all kinds of packages on there. They have a, a package that's just the, the power hub and the battery, or you, know, or you can buy things a, a la carte as well too, so you're not locked in. And another good thing is everything is compatible with other brands. So if I say I want to use my Epic battery and I want to use it with their, their power hub, not a problem. Same thing with this panel. It can get hooked up to a different inverter. So everything is, uh, is very compatible across all the different systems, and that's really good because I don't want to get rid of things that I have now I want to find a way to use this system and bring in some of the other items that I already own. Now I'm going to take all of these things down to my boat in a couple of weeks and then I'm going to do another video where I do an installation and do some testing. But just for fun, I'm going to wire all this stuff up right here at my kitchen counter and see how plug and play this system really is. Now first, I need to remove all of these access panels, so let me go get a screwdriver. Now just to be clear, I haven't been paid to make this video. In fact, we never accept money for doing reviews. Bluetti sent me their products to test out, and I told them up front, if I like this system, I'll make a video and recommend it. If I don't, I'll send it all back. And if I like it, but notice a few things that could be better, I'll mention those too. And to their credit, they agreed, and obviously, I'm pretty impressed with what they've built. Okay, well next I'm going to run wires from, the, from this hub to the battery. Uh, and on the positive line, I'm going to be putting a cutoff switch in between. And like I said, it's really cool that these wires are pre-labeled, so it makes it really easy to figure out which wire is supposed to go where. Alright, well I better put my glasses on for this stuff. <laughs> okay. They give you uh, these uh, little connectors. Like I said, they give you everything you need. So I have these little connectors that are going to help me connect these cables up to the battery. And I'm going to put them on first. Okay, so the battery is hooked up. Oh, and in case you're worried about in the order I'm doing this, the battery is an on-off switch, so I'm not working on anything hot right now. I have the, um, this cutoff switch installed on the, on the hot line going from the battery to the inverter, and now I'm going to start hooking up the, uh, the E-panel. Now the E-panel is going to have a couple of sets of wires going to it. It's going to have the AC out on the inverter going over to here, and it's also going to have a DC line, so let me get going on that. 
Now this panel box uh, comes with uh, all the fuses, 20 of them for uh, all the DC side. However, on the AC side, it does not come with breakers. Not sure why, they probably could have thrown a couple in. Anyway, they just use these standard um, breakers that you would just pick up at, uh, you know, at a, at a hardware store or uh, Lowe's, H, uh, Home Depot, wherever. You can pick these up anywhere. Uh, and they work just like uh, you would on a, uh, on a home panel. You just kind of pop them in and you wire it up. So let me get going on that. Okay, well I have the panel wired up. Now, uh, just so you know, I'm using a 20 amp breaker here because it's just what I had lying around the house. You, if you're gonna be using all four of these, you're gonna wanna use a 40 amp breaker for the main. Because what you do is you come in here on the center, you do the main and the ones on the outside are where you run your appliances. Uh, you know, of course you have your neutral bus bar here and your ground bus bar. And um, now I'm gonna get the DC wires and I'm gonna run the DC wires into this side of the panel. Okay, now I'm going to connect the solar panels. I already connected them up in parallel. Uh, you can do series parallel. You should I'm not going to do a video on all the different ways you can hook up solar panels, but just suffice it to say I have these done in parallel and I'm going to run the wires over to the e-panel as well. By the way, Blue Eddy isn't some new company. They've been around quite a while and are one of the biggest names in portable power stations and solar generators. So I feel pretty confident they'll be around and available if I ever need support down the road. Okay, so the solar panels are now hooked up. Uh, they do give you a cutoff switch, which I probably should have put in there, but I did. <laughs> but there is a cutoff switch, that way you can disconnect the solar uh, when you want to. Um, now the last thing um, I'm going to do here is I'm going to connect the communication cables. Now these are just regular you know, network cables and there's one that goes from the, the display panel um, and it goes to the distribution panel, the distribution panel goes to the, the RV5 and the RV5 goes to the battery. So there's several of them that we're going to hook up and it'll have everything communicating together. Well, okay, I got everything all wired up, and uh, let me power this baby up and see if it works. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the switch to the on position on the, the cutoff. Let me turn the battery on. Okay, the battery is on, and I can see that the power hub is now has power and it's lit up, and so has the, the monitor just lit up. Now there are two switches on the power hub an AC and a DC that I can tell it whether or not to send power to this distribution panel. So I'm gonna turn the AC on and I'll turn the DC on as well. Okay, I can see the lights came on here on the E panel. All of the DC circuits are lit. I hear a couple relays going off, probably turning on the AC. And um, the monitor is showing the, the levels, I guess. It's 22% power on the batteries. Well, I took the solar panels and I put them out on the terrace just to make sure they were all working good. And they are, I'm getting about 150 watts out of them right now, which is uh, cool, they're working. Okay, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take another breaker and I'm gonna put that into the system so I could test a couple of appliances and make sure that this baby's working. All right, so what I have here is I, um, this is just the end of an extension cord that I cut off and I'm going to use that. I'm going to hook it up to a breaker so that I can plug a couple of things in and test the system. Let me turn the AC power off. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so I have the, um, the breaker hooked up. I have a little light bulb here. And let me plug the light bulb into here. And I'll throw the breaker. And nothing. Hmm. Ah, forgot to turn the main breaker on. Main breaker on. There we go. Okay. Got some power here. Relays are on. Um, it's drawing a whole nine watts. Um, some kind of odd light bulb I have here, but it draws nine watts. You know what? I want to test this on something a little bit more powerful, though. Hold on a second. Okay. So I have my uh, little hand saw here, jigsaw, um, and these things eat up a decent amount of current. So let's see what happens. Okay, well that uh, ate up over 500 watts and that worked perfectly. So I think, I think this is all good. This is all good to go. Everything's working exactly the way I thought it would and I hoped it would. Um, and like I said, this only took me about 20 minutes to wire this thing up. It's gonna take a lot longer on the boat, of course, because I need to get through bulkheads and walls and all kinds of other things. But um, well, so far so good. Now, my only real complaint on this system so far, and as far as I know, these, these power hubs are not stackable in parallel. So I could not like say put two together to get say 12,000 watts instead of 6,000 watts. Um, not that it matters much to me because 6,000 watts is plenty for all what I need on the boat. I already, I only have 3,000 now, so I'm already doubling myself. Um, the other thing is that it would be nice if you could, if you were able to do these uh, two together uh, to get 220. Uh, instead of just being able to run 120 uh, items. Now again, this doesn't bother me on the boat because I already have transformers on the boat that'll take any 110 input and turn it over to 220 power anyway. And I'm sure most boats, if not all boats my size, have the ability to do that since often you're plugging in at a, a dock, uh, a pedestal that is only giving you 110 and you're able to turn it into 220 to run your 220 appliances. So it's not a big deal. In fact, it's really no issue for me whatsoever, but it would be nice if in a future version that they, um, they make the ability to parallel these or to run two of them in split phase 220. My only other, I, this is a pit pet peeve though, um, this, their, their, e, um, their e pad here, I like it. It, it. it looks great. I can see the, the levels for water and fuel and I, it's doing everything I want it to do. However, the background image is an RV. <laughs> We're boaters. I would, it would be nice if there was a, a way to switch that to a nice picture of a motor yacht in the background. So uh, Blue Eddie, if you're watching this video, maybe in a new firmware update, you can give us the ability to put a boat back there. That'd be really cool. So stick around for the install video. If you plan to put an inverter in your boat, you might want to see how this video turns out. Until then, like, subscribe, and drop your questions in the comments. Roger out.